Hey y'all, this is Turvin Deva. Just gonna do another unboxing real quick. this quite well, that's for sure. It's a copy of Satanism in Theory and Practice, as well as the key of Zev ben Avram. I'm recording these upside down so with my selfie camera so I gotta like try to figure out how I should show these to you so I'm gonna flip this around before I post it so let's start with this one these are both published by Fall of Man Satanism in theory and practice. Oh, this is just beautiful. Satanism in theory and practice by Evan H. Te text copyright 2021. All, il <clears throat> All illustrations by Victoria Angelone. Layout and editing by Alejo Torres. That's pretty cool. Sweet. Oh, threats of hell and hopes of paradise. Uh-oh. Gotta focus again. I really need a better camera, y'all. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, there we go. Oh, threats of hell and hopes of paradise. One thing at least is certain. This life flies. One thing is certain, and the rest is lies. The flower that once has blown forever dies. Omar Khayyam from the Rubaiyat. Highly recommend reading the Rubaiyat, by the way, for anyone here who's never heard of it. It's a great book. If you're interested in anything to do with Sufism. Yet mystery and reality emerge from the same source. This source is called darkness, darkness born from darkness, the beginning of all understanding. Lao Tzu from the Tao Te Ching. I am an insect who dreamt he was a man and loved it. Seth Brundle from The Fly. <laughs> man, I haven't seen that movie in forever. Probably since grade school. For Zach, my lover, for Rose Jack Jenkson. Ali, my friends. Is this a man or a woman that wrote this? Evan H. I don't know. Evan with a Y. It's probably a woman, but I really don't know. I hope it's a man, because then he'd be gay, <laughs> which I always uh, celebrate. Wow. Look at this table of contents. Holy cow. So, hopefully... Y'all can see this, but if not, oh well, I tried. <laughs> see, introduction, part one, an introduction to the Satanist religion, a working definition of Satanism, is Satan real, a brief history of Satanism, the major branches of Satanic thought, Satanic symbols, 
part two, some advanced discussion in satanic theory, rethinking the atheist-theist dichotomy on satanic magic, comparing satanic ethics, a comparative analysis of the satanic temple's seven tenets and the church of Satan's 11 rules of the earth. It is satanic to feel, it is satanic to love. Getting used to Satan, forming a satanic coven, basics and essentials, coven activities, spells, prayers, and meditations, and then they have uh, six different ones, prayers to Satan, hymn to Satan, satanic mantra, one, two, and three, the body, sacrifice, to cast a circle, to banish an unwanted person, to increase one's physical strength, black scrying bath, milk and honey bath for self-love, golden turmeric bath for great personal power, to bury a dead love, one and two, and then they go down through nine different meditations, group rituals, to initiate a new witch, a black mass, to destroy what destroys you, an offering of blood, an unbaptism for two, and then recommended reading and sources cited. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. That little thing. Reduction theory. Oh, that's that's beautiful. Oh, oh yay! I didn't know that. I didn't know how or if it was going to be illustrated. That's awesome. That is awesome. It looks like it's a woodcut. It's got to be. Sweet. Oh, they got little footnotes. Nice. The following essay is meant to provide a general overview of the development of Satanism as a religion. There is much more to the evolution of Satanism than I could provide here, and I encourage the curious reader to explore the recommended reading chapter of this book if they seek more information. Addressing the timeline. Pre-Christian Satanism? There's a lot of debate regarding where Satanism came from and how it began, especially amongst Satanists. Some of this discourse is motivated at least in part by the desire to assert that one kind of Satanism is the true Satanism by linking it to a specific historical inception, or to grant Satanism in general the kind of legitimacy that is afforded to much older religions. Fortunately, we've already solved this problem in the previous chapter by invoking a sufficiently narrow and specific definition of Satanism that isn't impaired by an anchor of history, but rather is tied conceptually to the very act of intentionally worshipping the figure of Satan, whatever that may be. This frees us up to do a historical investigation of Satanism for the sake of our own enrichment and understanding, rather than for the purpose of justifying our religion to others. The overall opinion tends to be that Anton LaVey formally established the Satanist religion in the 1960s. By formally established, I mean that he systematized and implemented a belief system specifically centered around the figure of Satan. Prior to this, while Satan had experienced a famous rehabilitation amongst poets, artists, socialists, and feminists during the 19th century, evidence supporting the genuine religious worship of Satan during this time is contested. Remember that two of our qualifying features for this definition of Satanism were that the veneration of Satan was both religious and intentional, meaning that artists who simply use Satan as imagery would not be counted as Satanists proper, nor would they likely have considered themselves Satanists in their own time. Proto-Satanism my reason for being skeptical of pre-Christian Satanism isn't because I have some particular love of LaVey, or because I think if something new is new, it is more legitimate. Rather, it's because I'm critical of the very idea that if something is old, it is legitimate, that Satanism needs to be hundreds or thousands of years old in order to be meaningful. 
I recall Wicca having a similar problem, and I want to learn from that. Some Wiccan writers, such as Margaret Murray, spent many years attempting to convince themselves and others that Wicca was one of the oldest religions, in spite of the fact that we empirically know who started Wicca and when, Gerald Gardner in the 1920s. Even more importantly, I, like many others, am not convinced that there is evidence to support the thesis that Satanism as legitimate religious practice existed prior to the modern era. It's important to remember that Christians have been accusing others, including other Christians, of demon worship for millennia. Much of the satanic activity that has been reported was done by Christians to demonize other religions and varieties of Christianity. Rather than thinking of Satanism as a religion that dates back to antiquity, there's some compelling evidence that Satanism first began to blossom right around the turn of the 17th century. It's unsurprising that Satanism, or proto-Satanism, began in very small groups or individuals here and there across Europe prior to the development of Satanism as a systematized religion. I wouldn't want to suggest that Satanism suddenly sprang out of the ground wholesale, complete and ready for us to enjoy. Rather, there's some evidence to suggest that Satanism emerged as part of idiosyncratic religious practices around the late 17th to early 18th centuries. These were probably a part of small, individual groups who purposefully worshipped the devil, but did not take part in a larger culture of Satanism, since such a thing did not exist at the time, and did not attempt to spread their religious ideology to others. Another way to put this is that this pre-Satanism, proto-Satanism, was self-contained and idiosyncratic. First proto-satanic organization that I want to draw attention to is the French Temple de Satan. That's pretty cool. Religious, they were in a religious organization founded in 1930. Oh, by a woman. Sweet. Not only referring to herself as a priestess of Satan, Nagloska also performed initiations to Satan and thoroughly incorporated the concept of Satan into her religious doctrine. The second notable character in this period of satanic development is Stanislaw Przybyszewski, a Polish writer and poet during the fin de... S I don't know how to fucking pronounce that, whatever, the decadence movement. He's often invoked as one of the first true Satanists due to his repeated exaltation of Satan in his artwork, including one nonfiction book about the figure, De Synagogue de Satan, and one novel, Satan's Children. Historian Per Foxnelt argues that, let's see if I can pronounce it again, <laughs> Przybyszewski, whatever, was the first person to attempt to synthesize a genuine religious Satanism. However, sociologist Massimo Intravigne, whatever, is somewhat incredulous. He argues that even though Przybyszewski, whatever, his increasing interest in esotericism motivated a thorough and genuine investigation of Satan as a, re as a religious subject. The poet did not establish satanic organizations, though he imagined and showed to his circles that organized Satanism had at least the potentiality to exist. This is important for students of Satanism to know, since it shows that even academics don't entirely agree on the blurred edges where Satanism proper begins and ends which is common for just about any major historical event. Rise and fall of the Church of Satan, Satanic Temple and the politicization of Satanism. Cool, cool, cool. Major branches of Satanic thought. Levian Satanism, Theistic Satanism, Humanist Satanism, Esoteric Satanism, Luciferianism, Satanic symbols, the sigil of Lucifer, of course, the Leviathan cross, Venus and Mercury. Called the Morning Star, another name for Lucifer, Venus is the female aspect of Satan, she who burns bright and illuminates ignorance. Mercury, Venus with horns, the god of charisma and sudden divine inspiration, 
It reminds us of that brilliant Lucifer who used his powers of great persuasion to build an army to overthrow the oppressor Yahweh. Crescent moon. Cool, it's got a little silken bookmark. Sweet. The rose. Cool. Sigil of Lilith. The triangle. Inverted cross. The eye. The cat. The snake. The rat. Of course, the goat. Cool. The bat. The crow. The spider. The eel. And the coyote. Advanced discussion and satanic theory. Okay. Satanic magic. Practice. Getting used to Satan. Oh, this is so that's awesome. I love it. So cool. Prayer to Satan. Three. Lord Satan. If it is my desire, crush my opponents underfoot and bring disease on their loved ones. Let their children be led to the slaughter where they will suffer forever until they die. Spare nothing they love from the touch of death and let everything they cherish burn, for I hate them and everything I hate must die. In nomine de nostri satana luciferi excelsi, hail Satan. <laughs> well, geez. Him to Satan, hail Satan the most infernal, she whose home is in deep holes and whose empty glory is eternal. Hail Satan the lowest of the low, she who is unholy absence, a rolling void in the shape of a god. Praise Satan who is both the bottomless well and the endless fountain, the massive black of the night which blinks with a million shining stars. Satan, great horned god, bast with her black claws, the tumbling serpent, Shiva, Lucifer, and sacred Venus, we adore you. Hail to the black god. Hail Satan. That's awesome. That's like the first, that's the first time I think I've seen in print Satan being referred to as female. I thought I, I was like the first person to do that. That's pretty cool. Somebody else has done that. Awesome. Satanic Mantra 2. When the wine is pouring, when the master is speaking, when the blood is spilling, sing with dark love, hailing. She is the slit, she is the cut, she is the blood that runs and that runs. She is the curve, she is the bend, she is the start that lies at the end. Sort of Ouroboros-esque there. This is pretty sweet. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I don't. Ha I mean, I don't know how much of it I'm gonna incorporate into my personal practice, but I'm probably gonna like. I mean, as far as incorporating it per like permanently, I'm definitely gonna like try out everything as as per usual. But see, we'll see how things pan out and what feels best.
excellent. So yeah, Satanism in theory and practice. It's quite well put together. Highly recommended if you're interested in the topic of Satanism. Now on to the key of Zev ben Avram. Oh, that's pretty cool. That looks like it was painted in blood because that's what dried blood looks like if you ever use it to, to paint things. Gee, how do I know that? Oh, because they've done it a bunch of times. Anyway. What's that? Looks like gold glitter and blood and it looks like Sumie ink or something. That's pretty cool. So yeah, this is a demonic grimoire. I guess I should have clarified that. Introduction for the materialists, preface for the spiritualists, the catalog of goetic spirits, the rites of summoning, the grand goetia, afterward, the meditation on the purposes of the goetic pact. So what this really is, is uh, it's um, basically a grimoire for the, you know, to work with uh, I hate to use the word lesser, but you know, lesser demons. They're not uh, not the ones from the Ars Goetia. It's uh, Goetia in the sense of you know, spirit working, not that specific book. This is awesome. But yeah, this author, like, you know, channeled a lot of these spirits and so on. So it's an original grimoire. That's cool. So there's a female, there's a dog, a bear, a bear with lobster claws. <laughs> it, uh, that reminds, I don't know why that reminds me of Man Bear Pig from South Park. It's the first thing that popped in my head. Uh, these are the 72 spirits that I, Zev ben Avram, have bound by this key to the service of mankind. Learn well their powers, that you may know what can be gained from them. Learn well their desires, that you may know how to... I don't know how to pronounce that, whatever. Anyway. Remember always that a master gives himself into the care of his servants. This is the first spirit, Barathor, the contemptuous. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna get along just great. <laughs> the contemptuous, that's great. It's a duke, mighty and fearful, with command over forty-eight legions. He appeareth in the guise of a shaggy-coated bear, with the pinchers of a crab. Oh, they're crab, not uh, lobster and will take no other form. He speaketh in a harsh voice. His power dwelleth in Saturn. That's his sigil. He's foremost a teacher of discernment who provideth instruction in distinguishing the good from the bad in all things. Often his students come to find that there is little good and much bad in the world. He is knowledgeable in many arts and sciences and under compulsion will share his knowledge. At the request of the conjurer, he will lay waste those whom he deems contemptible, ruining them in the eyes of men and women, or afflicting them with plagues of body and spirit. He maketh barren the wombs of women. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely going to enjoy working with him. Yeah, I resonate with so much of that. It's wonderful. Kraltus, the hundred degreed scholar. I don't want to read the entire thing, I, you know, 
copyright infringement. The Vesola, Tomb Guardian. Darany, the Arbiter of Discourses. Mayfax, the Sky Vagabond. Nineveh, the Flower of the Palace Garden. Phyllis, the Child in the Cell. Tomasos, the Terror of the Deeps. Kirkor, the Antagonist. Delua, the False Cavalier. Anyway, I don't want to go through all of this. There's a lot of them, so I'll just... Oh, look at that sigil. I like that one. That's pretty cool. Estine, the singer who walks the wide road. The 20th spirit is Estine, a great magister. She appeareth as a woman with the tail of a pheasant. And she weareth the garb of a man, very dapper, with a fine tall hat upon her head. And she carries a walking cane and twirls it with insouciance. God, I'm ashamed of myself. I don't know how to pronounce it. She is an officer in the Order of the Golden Beast. Her power dwelleth in the sun. So she's she's kind of butch. I like that. That's awesome. Funny that I, you know, was uh, pulled to look at that one in particular. Zevak, the Arch Sorcerer. <laughs> this is so awesome. Yet another silken bookmark. I really appreciate those. I'm always using like random scraps of paper and stuff as bookmarks, but these are so nice. Oracle. That's really cool. I appreciate the symmetry of that. See, I'm still in the middle of doing a series of rituals, you know, with the the procedure being, you know, channeled myself, you know, original, an original style that I developed from working with Satan and, you know, demons. It sort of just took shape on its own. And once I'm finished with those 72 plus uh, the 73rd proofless, this... I believe is going to be the next series that I do in the same format. I've been channeling um, chants and advice and sigils f with visualizations um, to use um, to use them for different purposes. For, you know, things like empowerment, cursing, protection just on and on and on, a bunch of different things related to the areas of specialization of the various demons. Phyroa, the, philosoph the philosopher scribe. It is her office to teach every kind of philosophy. She knoweth certain moral and ontological secrets that are not possessed by any sage in hell or upon the earth. She will give aid to her master in understanding any difficult thought or concept. In her presence, men and women grow disturbed by their own failures of intellect. Awesome. <laughs> this is just awesome. I'm very excited about this. Oh, it's, even, it's even more than I'd hoped for. These are the 72 spirits that I, Zev Ben Avram, have bound by this key to the service of mankind. Oh, sweet! <laughs> I wondered if they were going to have any, like, full-page illustrations in this one, and there we go. That's awesome. The Rites of Summoning. Hmm. I wonder if I'm going to use my format or this one. This seems very hoity-toity uh, traditional western ceremonial magic and not so much the uh, uh, ecstatic 
channeling partial possession thing that I do. <laughs> but you know me, edge lord, gotta go, go with the extreme. <laughs> That's exactly why I don't do this rituals in front of other people. <laughs> Everybody's like, eh, I'm going to do this, that, or the other thing with you. And I'm like, I don't really want to be like, you know, <laughs> possession chanting. <laughs> you know, like, like it comes out and it's pretty much like what you would expect. Um... If anybody else was present whenever I, I was, you know, fully tapped in doing that, I'm sure they would be absolutely terrified and like leave their room because like, you know, stuff starts moving and, you know, and I'm like basically speaking in tongues in a voice that's not my own and like the candle flames go crazy and yeah, like, I'm like, honey child, I don't think you're ready. <laughs> like, and I'm, I can't get fully in the zone with people like watching. I mean, it depends. Like if I'm prepared for a very structured particular type of ritual with a group, then, you know, I'm fine, but I have to have like a advanced preparation for that. Um, but when it comes to like my personal, uh, ecstatic style, uh, it's more earthy then that's that's very private anyway afterward a meditation on the purposes of the goetic pact goetic conjuration is in its essence a pact an act of cooperation between a sorcerer and a demon that's cool Definitely recommend this if you're interested in this sort of sorcery. It's very pretty, I think. Higher quality than average, although I do have to admit the binding seems kind of weak, but these were like 40, 40 euros each plus shipping, so uh, I guess that's to be expected, you know, like, if they were like 80 or more, then you would expect a, a much stronger binding, but for what they, you know, what they cost, they're very good, and the, the material is unmatched, I think, as far as, you know, being what this is. This is the best of this type of thing that I've seen so far. And I've, I've read a lot, I've read a lot of these type of books and I've, you know, skimmed a bunch and countless websites and, you know, over the years. And yeah, this is, this is top shelf stuff. So yeah, the key of Zev Ben Avram and Satanism in theory and practice check them out. Definitely recommend. Can't wait to read these. So awesome. So anyway, that's all for this one, folks. Have a great day.